Hi everybody, this is Otis Bradley from 50green.com TV. This is number 36 in a series of 50 things you can do to green your home now. Today we're talking about organic gardens. A couple reasons you might want to consider an organic garden. Number one, saves you money. Grow your own, saves money. Everybody likes that in tough economy, right? Tastes better. Healthier, avoid all those chemicals and fertilizers they put in the ground for your uh, commercial type foods. It's safer, you avoid the genetically altered foods. There's less embodied energy. We don't ship vegetables or fruits all over the world to get to your table. It goes right from your garden to your table, fresh as could be. Number six, it's great exercise. Gardening is one of the best aerobic exercises you can get. And number seven, it's excellent education for the children. Kids really get into it if you get them involved, and it's a great way for them to see how real food actually reaches the table. It gives them a better appreciation for things. Okay, this is a fabulous house I saw in a Portland, Oregon green building tour. You can see their, their garden beds here. This house was brand new, and they, uh, as you can see, just started growing things. It was the fall season, so they're probably going to start their vegetables in the spring. But you can see how it can be fun and pretty incorporated into the landscape design. Another shot of their garden beds. And you might ask, why do we need a garden? You know, we can just go down to the grocery store. And it is true, the United States has the best and most abundant, probably the safest food source of any country in the world. But have you ever picked up one of those really great, big, beautiful looking peaches in your grocery store in the off season? brought a few home, just, you know, took a mouth-watering bite into it, and, bleh, you know, it's just a mealy, disgusting thing, nothing resembling a, the way a tree-ripened peach should taste. Well, that's because that's a fruit that's grown on the other side of the hemisphere, like in Chile or something, where they, they have the opposite season, and they ship it all the way from South America to your grocery store. Now to do that, they've got to figure out ways to grow these things with tougher skins, tougher bodies. Sometimes they inject dyes and colors. And, you know, I, I don't know what the nutritional value is, but I can almost guarantee you it's a fraction of what a, a real tree ripened peach would be. All right, we're going to show you how to make your own raised bed gardens. That's Luke and Lucy helping out here. You can see we spent about a thousand bucks on materials. You could do this certainly with found materials, and you can do this with two by lumber. I I chose this uh, synthetic decking. It's a you know a composite decking because it's mixed with plastic and woods and less likely to rot. We've got a lot of termites in our area in Southern California, but there's a lot of different ways you can make these. You can also make them out of rock walls. But what we chose are these uh, 12 foot long by six inch high board so they're 12 foot by six inch and they're one by material so they're kinda of thin and we put two of them together to make a, tw a six foot wide by 24 foot long raised bed and we stacked them up three high to make it 18 inches high now all you need to do is find a nice sunny location to build your own raised bed you need to get good soil I got this from an organic farm in our area. They were even able to give me a soils report that told me exactly what the chemical composition of the soil was. And then we're adding some organic fertilizers and actually doing a green mulch where we're growing legumes, which I'm very excited because they just sprouted. But you can see here, these are steel stakes that are used for foundations. We use those to brace up the sides. Um, simply stack these up three high to give us an 18 inch high bed. You could go 24 inches or even 12 inches. We added a very simple watering system attached to this. There's a valve here and a pipe that comes along. I have three sections that allow me to water different sections of the plants a little bit differently if I choose to. So what we did here is uh, the boards were 12 feet long so I stuck two boards together and then six feet wide which is important you don't want to go much more than six feet because it's hard to reach the middle about three feet would be the 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 best or the deepest you'd want a garden bed so you can reach into the middle and do your weeding or whatever 
but these sections are 12 feet and 12 feet for a total of 24 feet long on our garden bed and then I split it up into a couple of sections partly to make these beds a little bit stronger and uh, I have different watering in each section so again uh, height wise it's it's three boards stacked up so this would be the elevation so that gives us 18 inches high and there you see my watering system I attached the this is a just a PVC tube and very easy to glue together. You get a T fitting and a 90 fitting and a valve. Very simple stuff to do. And then you put the flex hose on here. This is half inch flex hose that stops here. And off of that, I put in the quarter inch watering lines. And the reason I did this, I'm going to show you the source that I modeled all this off of a guy named Lee O'Hara who does these uh, really fantastic organic gardens. But according to him, the uh, you don't want to water the on top of the leaves of the plant because you can get funguses and things like that. You really want to water the beds. So as your plants grow up and get high here, you just turn these on and it, it'll water the beds, and not the leaves or the tops of the plants. And I have to admit that I'm not a gardener at all. I I'm a home builder, so this is my first foray. I figured uh, I know how to build green homes, but now we need to work on our green lifestyle. So there's a full shot of the of the beds and you can see my sprouts they just started sprouting it's uh, December here in Southern California and it's been cold it's been almost 30 degrees I know some of you that means nothing but uh, it's taken about 10 days for all these little sprouts to start now they're starting to grow what this is is legumes I'm gonna let it grow up and before it seeds I'm gonna cut it all up and mulch it back into the soil that's called green mulch it puts a lot of nitrogen into the soil and you want to know about NPK's the NPK's of fertilization that means nitrogen phosphorus and potassium a lot of times nitrogen is uh, fish powder or guano stuff bat shit <laughs> and uh, phosphorus is bone meal potassium you can get all these things at your local garden store look for the organic we also put a bale of alfalfa which is very nutritious it helps the soil and as you build your soil rotate your crops and and create nutritious soil the worms will come in there and the worms start creating the worm casings and worm mulching which is very good for your soil you can continue to improve even bad soil if you if you aren't able to get good topsoil also by putting your compost from your composter in there that provides a lot of nitrogen and nutrients okay bugs so a lot of problems with plants or or produce is from the fertilizers you know the way back uh, starting when with the DDTs and those heavy fertilizers which are now outlawed there are still lots of fertilizers and it seems like almost everybody uses that roundup which is convenient but that stuff is super toxic I mean there are actually some of these bugs are good like ladybugs will eat aphids and the praying mantis will eat aphids and other bugs but if you have good healthy soil you shouldn't have as much problem there are lots of organic type insecticidal sprays like insecticidal soaps that you can use that are much safer than the heavy chemicals and if you choose to get Lee's DVDs which I highly recommend he explains how you make this stuff this is Lee O'Hara a uh, guy in California who's a passionate organic gardener and as I said I'm not a gardener myself but I'm trying to be one and I bought both his tapes this one's about building an organic garden and, and a whole bunch of different vegetables and this one is specifically about the organic tomato and I'm gonna try a couple of heirloom tomatoes in my garden this year you can find him at organichomegardener.com I encourage you to to buy his DVDs if you're interested in building your own organic garden. There's lots of good books too. This is a good one you can find on Amazon. Alright, so organic gardens. Why? They are good for you. They are good for the planet. Healthy, tasty, saves money, and they're fun. So that's number 36. Go ahead, get out there, start planting your organic garden so that when spring rolls around you're ready to harvest some delicious vegetables for your next salad. This is Otis Bradley signing out. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.